I'm going to talk you guys through that and tell you a little bit about why the car looks the way it looks. So obviously a huge honor and uh, pleasure to really work, obviously, on the new MX-5. The car with such a rich pedigree and popular following. At the same time, a huge challenge because when designing the new MX-5, we were really dealing with a true automotive icon. So true icons are created with authenticity at heart. They're mindful of a clear mission that affects all decisions made during their development. <clears throat> for Mazda, the MX-5 is our brand icon and really stands or was the core of what Mazda is all about. As we all know, that's the pleasure of driving. <clears throat> MX-5 has really made this possible. So Miata was the perfect lightweight sport and really turned MX-5 into a lifestyle. Weighing in under 2,200 pounds and with that perfect 50-50 weight balance, it was and still is the perfect canvas for special versions and personalization. <clears throat> it's really the spirit of the MX-5 that allowed you to experience the thrill of driving again, whether it was on the track or the street. That's why on any given weekend, there are more Mazda's race than any other brand. Again, the MX-5 has really made this possible. The MX-5, as we all know, can trace its roots back to the sports cars of the 50s and the 60s. So launched in 1989, the MX-5 Miata appealed to young, influential enthusiasts who were eager for a reliable, fresh, <coughs> convertible sports car. Now, we captured these young, influential enthusiasts and sparked the MX-5's 25-year legacy as the best-selling two-seat sports car of all time. Now, in its success, the MX-5 became an effective brand icon, propelling Mazda's brand aspirations and awareness both here and beyond. <clears throat> when introduced in 1989, no true affordable sports car existed. This is really where MX-5 challenged the industry. By the third generation, greater competition had emerged and really kind of evolved beyond our original concept and forced us to evolve with them. So with that in mind, when approaching the design of the new MX-5, we knew we had to evolve to capture and satisfy this traditional enthusiast, but at the same time, we had to appeal to this new customer demographic. This new enthusiast is tech savvy, values technology, embraces it in all areas of their life. This is the person that buys a new iWatch, drives a car with nav, and can't be without their iPhone or iPad. If we all know this new enthusiast, could very well be one of you guys. This customer really, they still want emotional connection to their vehicle. They love the way that car and the technology make them feel. And with all this new technology, they still want to be engaged when they get behind the wheel. They still want that full sensory experience of owning and driving their car. <coughs> So with that as a background, let me explain to you guys how we approach designing the new, the new MX-5. So for us to design the MX-5 to satisfy both this traditional enthusiast but appeal to this new customer, we really focused on the three key building blocks of car design. The first thing we did was refine the basic proportions of the car. And second, we honed the surface movement as part of Kodo's evolution. And third, in order to raise that overall level of perfection, we incorporated no compromise modern So first, let me explain how we refine the basic proportions of the car. Now, proportion is a common word, but its definition can be sometimes vague. So for people, good proportions are well-defined. We all know those people with good proportions. So what are these critical points in the proportions of a car? For the MX-5, the first thing that we focused on was reducing the front and rear overhang of the car. Now, having less mass at each end of the car, of course, contributes to better vehicle but it also gives the car a very agile stance. I believe, in fact, the new MX-5 has the lowest and shortest front overhang of any current production sports car. Now, second, with a large 17-inch wheel, as Rob mentioned, the first gen only had the 14s. And finally, we gave the car a very long, we tried to get the hood as long as possible and really push the, uh, the windshield as far back as we could. Now, this is a common characteristic among all our new generation products, and really, clearly suggests a front engine rear wheel drive layout. We actually pushed the A-pillar back 70 millimeters compared to the, the current car. Now this uh, allowed us to shorten the roof, which allowed us to reduce the space to accommodate that roof. And this allowed us to push the deck lid forward 20 millimeters. So in all, the new, uh, the new MX-5's cabin is the most compact cabin in the history of the model. 
So with the MX5, we really wanted to focus on these four essential elements through good proportions to, de to design a car that is both timeless and dynamic. Let's we'll talk about the stance of the car for a minute. So what is more stable than a piece of architecture that has to withstand the elements? From the pyramids to the Eiffel Tower, the trapezoidal shape is the most universally understood stability form. Similar to a speed skater, maintaining perfect balance by placing points of contact at the outer edge, the BMX5 really tries to get the wheels to the absolute corner of the car to give it that powerful grounded stance. So to achieve this very wide, stable stance from the front, we incorporate the trapezoidal shape. We lower the nose and position the grill, lamps, and side intakes as low and as wide as possible. This is a big change in the third gen car. In the rear, we took a similar approach to give the car that very stable stance by tapering the rear fenders and pushing the signature lamps in as far inboard as regulations would allow. We then pulled the lower details as far outboard as possible, making the car feel very stable and wide planted. So the surfacing of the car is the second element of the design I'm going to talk about. So Kodo is Mazda, and this vehicle represents a major evolution in the Kodo philosophy. With the MX-5, our theme was to really hone and refine that movement expressed by the vehicle. So with all our new designs, we begin by developing a speed form. Now this helps us really understand the surfacing and see, it lets us see how light plays with that surface in order to deliver this dynamic movement that we're always looking for. And with the MX-5, our theme was, again, to really hone and refine that sense of movement expressed by the vehicle. We wanted to capture emotion in motion, which is the essence of Kodo design. From the front of the vehicle to the rear, we created that strong front fender movement, dynamic movement from the rear of the car to the front, and a nice broad hood section that really enhances that strong, stable stance I just spoke about. We really wanted to express power being and release by applying these stop and go movements over the body. So the front fenders are peaked, creating that tension I just mentioned. <clears throat> that tension is then released dramatically through the volume of the body work over the door section. That, that tension then returns at the rear fender, really emphasizing that sense of power at the rear wheels. And finally, the body work tapers crisply at the rear to give the new MX-5 a very dynamic and clean quality. So the third element of the design I'm going to talk to you guys about are these modern details. Now for the exterior details, we really went, wanted to incorporate machine-like precision to give the car both light and character. For the headlights, we really tried to evolve our distinctive lighting signature. We worked hard to achieve a piercing look in the eyes as if the car had locked in on its prey. All these elements combined to help express a strong, aggressive character, but with that unique MX-5 identity. From the rear, we wanted to capture that distinct identity of the original MX-5, but interpret it in a modern way. You can tell it's a roadster at first glance with LED lighting that's signature of our entire current lineup. So as this is an open-top car, we place a great deal of importance in the relationship between the interior and the exterior. So therefore, the top-down image is the default state for the new MX-5. Now for a normal vehicle, the design is divided between interior and exterior, by the location of the glass. But for the MX-5, we really wanted the interplay between the interior and exterior to be seamless. So we considered the interior and exterior as one and the same. Now, to really appeal to that open top state as the foundation of the car, we brought the exterior finish into the interior. So as a result, the exterior blends seamlessly with the interior of the car, really giving that open feeling to both the driver as well as passenger. We aim to simplify the driver environment with center focus on the tachometer and secondary gauges with a symmetrical cockpit layout. The decoupled display with Mazda Connect really allowed us to slim up the IP, providing a greater feeling of openness to the interior, enhancing that feeling of oneness between car and driver, or something we like to refer to as Jimbai Itai. And when you sit in the new MX-5, you'll notice the fender peaks. You can actually see the corners of this car. This is a character that we really want to try and bring into the interior. And again, that interplay between exterior and interior is key here. Even the seat design has a, a central axis running through it, and the instrument panel has a strong horizontal movement, 
making the interior feel spacious as well as lightweight. For the interior hardware, we carefully designed all the details of the performance, feel combined with craftsmanship. One of the ways we achieved this was by really drawing out the warmth of the materials themselves. A few good examples are the air vent bezel, the switch gear on the steering wheel, and the leather wrap shifter with uh, red stitching. So the piping or stitching that you'll see on the edge of each material is carefully studied for the details. Sewing is used as a finishing touch to make the most of each material, such as fabric or buckskin. We even considered how each stitch sits on the base material in order to maintain that clean, very uniform appearance. <clears throat> so we've established three grades for the interior, each one with an obsession to both detail and style. Now here we have the entry sport grade, Next, we have the core, the, the club grade. The club grade features the body-colored upper door panels, as well as red accent stitching on the seats, shifter, and door end panels. And finally, the Grand Touring, or GT grade. Now, for the Grand Touring grade, we've added the leather seating surface, surfaces, the leather end wraps, lower IP, as well as door inserts. We've also added bright trim to the HVAC dials and air vents. Finally, for the exterior color palette, we really wanted to develop colors that really enhance the, the unique shapes and forms of the all-new MX-5. So we come up with six dynamic colors. We have our signature soul red, ceramic metallic, jet black, crystal white pearl, meteor gray, and finally blue reflex. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thanks so much. And I really want to say I really hope you get to physically experience what I've just described as your drive today.